Hello and welcome to another day of Walking with Jesus. For those of you who have been following this um, devotion, you will know that I am a day late and probably several dollars short, but anyway, I wanted to uh, release another devotion and let you know at the same time that I'm probably going to scale back to doing this just three times a week. So shooting probably for Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday releases. And I hope that that will be fine with you all. Um, I know it will give me a little bit more opportunity to prepare. Anyway, as we continue in the Christmas season, because believe it or not, we are in the Christmas season. I know we live in the United States of America and nobody else thinks it's still Christmas, but it is the season of Christmas according to the church calendar. And so we're going to finish up in the Gospel of Luke and we are going to come to chapter two. Last week we left off with the shepherds being told by the angels that um, they would be able to go into Bethlehem and the sign would be that there would be a child wrapped in swaddling clothes, a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. So at verse 15, we pick up the story, Luke 2, 15. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Well, there's just a couple of things that strike me when I think about this. First of all, we've already discussed the fact that the shepherds were considered the lowest and the scum of the earth, as it were. They were necessary. Someone had to take care of the sheep, but it was a dirty, smelly job. And it was given to those um, who just by the very virtue that they were doing it, they were outcasts and they were um, their testimony in the court of law wasn't uh, wouldn't be accepted. So we have that side of things. But here I'm thinking, you know, they've got a job to do. They're out there. They're watching over the sheep. And their, their task is to take care of these sheep and to make sure that they uh, get well taken care of, that they're protected from any of the harmful critters that might try and get to them. And I just imagine, I don't know this, but I, I, I imagine that it's possible that one or two of the shepherds might have said, well, you know, we can't just leave the sheep. We need to stay here and take care of the, uh, the sheep. We have a job to do. And they may have not gone in to Bethlehem to see the baby. Just think what they would have missed, the, the opportunity that we, they would have missed if they had stayed out of a sense of responsibility and obligation when the angels sang to them, they could have missed an opportunity to see God become flesh, dwelling as a baby laid in a manger. So I, I just, I think about that and I wonder how many times we miss something that God wants to do because of our responsibilities and the things that we have to do, the things that we have to get done. I know early on in the ministry, I discovered that the interruptions are the ministry. That's where ministry happens. I have things that I want to get done and very rarely do I make it through a day where I get to do the things that I had intended to do because there are multiple interruptions throughout the day. 
But those interruptions are not interruptions, they're God appointments. And brothers and sisters, I have a feeling that that's true for you as well, if you would but see them that way. If you would recognize that these are not interruptions, but they are God appointments. The other thing, <clears throat> what if they had not believed? What if, what if they had just decided to stay out on the hills? What if they had doubted, perhaps, as Zechariah had doubted? <clears throat> they would have missed it, but they didn't. They went with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. <coughs> uh, every time I hear that phrase, I think of my wife who pictures Mary, Joseph, and the baby all lying in the manger. <clears throat> it's just the baby lying in the manger. They saw Mary and Joseph, and the baby was laying in the manger as, he, as they had been told. So when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. In other words, they let Mary and Joseph and anybody else who may have been around know what the angels had said to them. And everyone who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. They wondered, it doesn't say they believed, it, it doesn't say they rejoiced, it doesn't say that they thought, oh wow, that's cool, the baby, this, this baby is the Messiah. They, they, don't, they wondered. They, a sense of awe, a sense of surprise, a sense of possibility, but who knows whether they believed. And then it says, but Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. In other words, the other people, <coughs> they wonder. Mary knows, and she treasures it. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, she treasures up all these things, pondering them in her heart and realizing, once again, God's affirmation that this child is special. This child, as the angels have said, is, is a gift given. This child is the Son of God. This child is the one who brings peace on earth among those with whom God is pleased. This child is special. And Mary has an affirmation of that again. She treasures it. The shepherds, well, they go back to their field. They go up to their job and they pick up their responsibilities. But they do it glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and been told. Now, I think this is really critical. This is my final point for us today. When we have seen, when we have heard, when we have come to know, then we also should go back into our world, back to our jobs, back to that which we have been tasked with doing. But we should do it praising God and rejoicing, glorifying and giving God glory for all that he has done. You know, brothers and sisters, we cannot give God enough praise and adoration. So my charge to you today is if you know that the baby in the manger is really God who became flesh, if you have seen that he is your savior and your hope, would you just spend this day and every day glorifying God, giving him praise and honor, marveling and telling others about what he has done? Because that's the joy of where we live, is we live with the knowledge of Jesus as God's Savior, our salvation. And we should proclaim that boldly. Give God the glory to his name today and every day. God bless you. Have a great day glorifying God.